All right, this is tutorial two in our jewelry sawn wooden pendant uh, tutorial series. And in this tutorial, we're going to get going with image importation. So we need an image. And the best place to head for images would be Google Images. So I'll bring that over on the screen here. And it looks like this. So google.ca. And we'll just type something in here like a, I'll, I'll do what I did on the uh, sample at the beginning, which is wave. And I'll click that. And I'll head to images right there. And I get all sorts of images of waves. Now I have to think about what would be useful from a cut it out with a jewelry saw perspective. And not many of these are. So what I would suggest is heading under tools here and selecting a type. And the type should be, uh, I'm going to head to line drawing here to simplify things. And now I'm going to get some waves that look more in keeping with what I could cut out. But still too complicated. So the next step is let's let's try this simple wave. Now that I type that in, I get some waves that start to look like something I might be able to do. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to pick something that I like. Let's try this one here, right there. It pops up in this window here, and if I try to save this, right click and I go save image as. I end up with a file type that probably is it's a little weird and it won't work with Inkscape. So here's what I suggest. You're going to hit the Windows key, the Shift key, and the S key on your computer at the same time. You're now in the snipping function. We're going to highlight this. There we are. Or select that. And now I have it on my clipboard. And now I can run back to Inkscape and I can right click and I can paste that. And now I have that and I can work with it. So the next thing I can see is that this uh, doesn't fit very well on the outline that I have, which is the size I need it to be. So I can grab a corner and start dragging, but notice I can also mess it up. So hit Control Z to bring that back. Uh, I'm going to lock the width and height relationship here. We unlocked it for our sizing our actual piece, but now we're going to lock it so that when I drag this, it always maintains the relationship between width and height. So I'm going to bring that in. Now I have a choice. I can make this this small and, and put it on my pen or my uh, work piece there. But the problem with that is it's going to be super tiny. So I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to make it bigger. And then if I click once on it and then I click twice on it, I get these grab handles that look like they could turn. And I could turn this oh, like this. The other thing I could do, Control Z, is I can pick it and I can go up here and I've got some turning options, right? And flipping options. So if I rotate the selection 90 degrees counterclockwise, I could do that. So those are options for you. Next thing is I have to make sure it fits in the uh, actual pendant I'm making. So I'm going to fit it in like this, Ooh, like that. And if, I, if I'm zoomed out, it tries to snap to something by default. So if I zoom in, that will stop happening. There's another, you could turn that snap off, but I'm just going to zoom in and deal with it that way. Leave yourself enough room at the top of your pendant for your string to go through in the end. Don't, don't have your design go right up to the edge. Also, we talked about how that if you don't leave enough room, the wood will get very thin here and it could break. So anyway, that's that. Uh, looks pretty good like that. And that might be it. Maybe that's all I need. Uh, but in the next tutorial, we're going to talk about how we could do some editing and work with this image and, and customize it a bit. So if that's all you need, that's all you need. But otherwise, um, next video is editing.